Good afternoon. The goal of this presentation is to draw your attention to the enormous mineral potential of Saudi Arabia. My personal experience draws from having worked for more than 30 years on projects in the Arabian Shield, and that includes four years living in Yemen. It also draws from WGM's experience spanning more than 50 years. So why exactly are we interested in minerals in Saudi Arabia? Well, I would actually ask why are we not interested in minerals in Saudi Arabia? The kingdom is rich in minerals. 59 are shown in this view. Those that are highlighted represent the large percentage that are actually mined. So we should think of Saudi Arabia as a diversified mineral producer experiencing rapid growth, not only in mining, but in downstream production. This is a view of the major deposits, but these are only a few, more than 5,000 records in the Saudi Mineral Occurrence Database. So you might ask, where do they occur? Well, let's take gold, for example. WGM has identified 17 major gold belts in the kingdom. Most of these are associated with major structural zones, so you ask, where are the mines? Well, the mines are actually located exactly where you would expect them to be. They are located within gold belts and are mostly associated with major structural zones. Gold is associated with sheared and hydrothermally altered rocks with or without quartz veins. The Sukhabarat and Bolga deposit shown in the upper part of this view uh, are a bit of an exception because they're associated with, um, with intermediate intrusions, the Ida suite of intrusions, that are a special class. These are disseminated uh, gold deposits. Uh, they would also include Beer Tawila. In total, there are 837 records for gold in the Mineral Occurrence Database. So we ask, what do they look like? Well, in fact, they look exactly like you would expect them to look. There's no surprises here. The disseminated deposits are shown in the view at the top. The other uh, types of mineralization are, are, are very similar to what you'd expect to see in any other shield area of the world, uh, whether it's in South Africa or Ghana, Brazil, Australia, uh, or Canada. Uh, the upper center photo is the porphyry type mineralization. The other photos are, are sheer are structurally hosted uh, uh, gold mineralization, very, very typical of the mesothermal deposits that occur in the kingdom. Mahadahab is a bit of an exception. This is a high sulfidation epithermal system that's located in a felsic volcanic center uh, that occurred sometime during the assembly of the Arabian Shield. Having a 3,000 year history uh, may make this mine unique, but the geological setting occurs in other areas of the shield. Opportunity. Opportunity exists for similar discoveries. In the photo at left, we can see the high grade vein system, which is about 50 centimeters wide. The photo at right shows a typical view of, of some of the, uh, of the mineralization. If we turn to base metals, WGM has identified 19 volcanic belts that many would call greenstone belts that host base metal prospects. Again, the major deposits and prospects are located exactly where you would expect to find them, except perhaps for Jabal Dalan, which is a Mississippi Valley type zinc deposit located up here in limestones, in tertiary limestones up here on the Red Sea coast. This deposit, in fact, represents a vastly underexplored limestone terrain that, that parallels the coast. But, you know, due to the historical focus of exploration on gold mineralization in the kingdom, most of these VMS belts, these base metal belts, are highly underexplored. And that also spells opportunity. Where are the opportunities? Well, Including the, the active mines, there are more than 740 copper, zinc, lead, and nickel prospects in the, in the Arabian Shield. Very few of these have been explored in any great detail. But I must pause at this point to credit the Saudi Geological Survey 
for implementing programs both on the ground and airborne surveys to better define these mineral belts and enhance the understanding of metal occurrences in the shield. I believe that some of this work will produce great benefits for companies willing to follow up the systematic exploration programs. This is what Saudi VMS deposits look like. Again, there's, there's no surprises here. At the upper left, we see a felsic volcanic unit overlain by, by uh, banded foliated metasedimentary rocks. In the lower left, we have a photo underground of some of the pyrite mineralization in the foot wall argillites. The other photo simply shows some of the high grade copper zinc mineralization that is very typical of the Almasani mine. Industrial minerals. Well, industrial minerals are plentiful in the Arabian Shield, uh, both in the Shield and in the Phanerozoic platform. I've shown a selection of deposits and major prospects as listed. Notable are the Zargat a magnesite mine, yeah, the Azabira uh, bauxite mine, a Zargat uh, deposit. Uh, the Wadi Yiba feldspar mine down here in the south, and of course Al Jalamid, one of the world's greatest phosphate deposits. This map is, it, uh, illustrates the distribution of, uh, of industrial minerals in the shield, but in fact, there are more than 2,500 prospects that are not shown. The industrial mineral sector has enormous potential for growth. In many cases, the only question lies in developing a market because the potential quality of the Saudi mineral prospect is quite competitive. SWOT analysis is often used as a, as a metric for assessing project risk assessment, but I'd like to focus on the O for opportunities, which I've been talking about, and specifically the underexplored nature of Saudi Arabia, general lack of competition for licenses, in comparison with other major mining areas and the types of support available. As I have mentioned, geological diversity and the many types of deposits in the kingdom, there is nothing special about the geology of Saudi Arabia that would limit the favorability for it or limit the potential for gold discovery, for many uh, discovery of many types of deposits. The kingdom especially the shield, but also the Red Sea coast is underexplored for metal. Canada has been, under, has been explored for 150 years and we still find large deposits, sometimes very close to existing mines. Experience shows that well-explored areas can yield a discovery and even old mines can have a new life. The fact that Saudi Arabia has been overlooked for many years also creates opportunity. I've used the word opportunity a lot in this presentation, but it's true. There have been some impediments to investment in the past, which have reduced competition. As a result, many opportunities exist to acquire good exploration properties. However, the climate has changed with the improvements in the mining code, increased funding for the Saudi Geological Survey. Uh, that will improve the geoscience information base. And we also have new domestic service companies that are now supporting explorers. Those that seize the opportunities available and have the capacity to think in the longer term will certainly benefit. Vision 2030 has been a catalyst for industrial diversification in the kingdom. As I said previously, times have changed. In the mineral sector, the Deputy Ministry for Mineral Resources has recruited administrators from within the minerals industry, and they understand the need for free-flowing information to support mineral sector investment. Many improvements have been made to the mining code. In 30 years of periodic association with the deputy ministry and the Saudi Geological Survey, I think we are entering a new age for the mineral sector and the vital role of the SGS will be very important to its, uh, its future success. As I am now on the cusp of retiring, I'm confident that
that there is a vast amount of knowledge at the Saudi Geological Survey that is available to investors. Speaking of changes, the production of many mineral products increased markedly during the period 2010 to 2020. Gold and silver up 400%, aluminum up 500%, 200% for phosphate. In the base metals, zinc production has increased four times, copper by 10 times. The production of marble blocks has tripled. Modern, which is a good metric for the industry in general, has seen its revenue increase by four times. Surely these are, these are signs of what is possible and what can continue in the future as new mineral products move into downstream industries. The future is best if Saudi investors understand the exploration process is not easy and it takes time. The Hahia Copper Prospect was identified by WGM as a target of interest in 1992. It's in one of our reports that is generally available to prospective investors. Only now, after, after many years of recent work, the Kefi Artar joint venture partners are getting close to mine development. They are to be congratulated for their vision and their persistence. International investors understand the process However, they need to understand what is available to them. The ministry and the Saudi Geological Survey do have a vital role in actively promoting opportunity at major mining conventions. And that really means attending those conventions and participating in the technical sessions. The four pillars of support uh, for the growing industry are certainly present in Saudi Arabia. Diverse mineral commodities, conventional deposit models, licensing opportunities, and support in all its forms. With understanding, the future is bright. You have my best wishes for good health during these difficult times, and I wish you good luck for all of those that explore. Thank you.